Hey, welcome back to my kitchen. Ah, I made those mint steaks the other day. And I had to use the pan for a while. And so in not using the pan for a while, I did not get the results I normally get when I do minutes or when I do anything in this ribbed pan. And so what I did was I steamed the inside and outside. And then after I steamed it with the pan still hot from the steaming, I sprayed coconut oil on it. And in spraying coconut oil on it, I then was late enough in the day I didn't really want to finish it. So what I'm doing here now is I am, the, the burner is on. I've got the pan obviously upside down. I don't want to touch that because that would be hot. But I'm wiping off the excess oil here. And at that point then, this thing should be pretty well ready to go back to cook. Now, it is going to smoke a little bit because when you do that, you're supposed to actually heat the pot up really hot and then spray this the stuff on and while the pores of the cast iron are still open you you spray the the uh, the uh, coconut oil you spray it on coconut oil uh works pretty good for that i also have some grapeseed oil and i got something else up there too I, but those, those work better than what olive oil does for seasoning a pan. So when you season a pan, you got to keep it, you got to keep it going. Okay. I also had sprayed coconut oil in there, but tonight to cook with, I'm actually going to use avocado oil. And again, this all has to do with smoke points and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to give it just a little bit more oil tonight than I did the other night. Again, that burner's hot. And like I said the other day, you want to you wanna make sure your pan is hot before you introduce the meat to it. Um, it just makes the cooking process go a lot better. Now what I'm going to cook here is just a T-bone steak. There's really nothing special about it. But let's see if that solution actually gained me anything. I don't know if you remember what that thing looked like the other night after I washed the, or uh, cooked the, the minute steak. But it was pretty choppy. Well, minute, minute steak is uh, kind of a ground, but, uh, ground beef kind of thing, so it, it kind of crumbled a little bit anyway. Uh, let's see what we got. Probably what I should do, this looks weird, but actually what that is is a ram grabber cracker crust. And I still got one of those here. One of these days I need to buy a case of Kraft pre-made cream cheese cheesecake filling and that works out pretty good now this steak is one I bought I think four days ago it has not been frozen it's just been sitting in my refrigerator this way so it's gonna look a little bit dark but that's okay um, aged meat is not a bad thing as long as you don't let it get to the point where it's beginning to turn. This is nowhere close to being ready to turn or getting ready to turn. Now again, that burner is still up. It's still on. Okay, that pan is warming up. I have, I'm running both elements on my burner and I've got it just over halfway here. Um, where do we go on that? Let's see here. What do I want on there for seasonings? I'm not sure. 
I think we're about to find out though. I know I want some salt. Let's do some salt. Sometimes I just do salt and pepper rather than putting somebody else's prepared seasoning on it. Uh, salt and pepper. Put salt on that side. A little bit of salt on this side. And some black pepper. I tend to like pepper. Um, one of the sauces, I used to eat a lot of Tabasco sauce. And uh, I still like Tabasco sauce, but I found something I like better. And that's Cholula sauce. Tabasco sauce is made with vinegar. Cholula sauce is not. It, it is purely a pepper sauce. And I've never, yeah, I explained the, the allergic reactions I sometimes get to, to uh, pepper seed uh, membrane. This is garlic. And I do like garlic. As you can tell, my pan is beginning to get warm. Okay. Now then, I don't know if you figured out what I did with the pan on the minute steaks, but I'm about to do it here again. Okay. Is there anything else up there I really, really want? Every once in a while, I will do a little bit of Adolph's tenderizer. You know, I, it's not MSG, I don't think. Uh, uh, some of these things that are salt, sugar, cornstarch. And salt, sugar, and cornstarch. And that's supposed to be tenderizer. It's definitely salty. I'm going to pass. I've got enough salt on that. Now then, again, the other night, like I did the other night, let's run a little bit of water. I just put yeah. When you can get that kind of response from your pan with just a couple drops of water, your pan is probably hot enough. The other thing about this is, yeah, you don't want to leave, you know, like I'm touching the edge of the pan. You wouldn't want to leave your that on your, your hand on that very long at all. But see, I got a nice soft little sizzle there. That'll go okay. That'll be good. And uh, we're going to let that fry up. Ah, let's zoom in here just a little bit. Now that the prep is done. Yeah. Oh, let's see here. Let's start putting some stuff away. That'll go to the wash me pile. Okay, this will go to the, I probably will need to wipe my hands again before this is over pile. Now then, that's my salt lid. I do like Himalayan peak salt. And I'm not sure that any brand of that is any better than any other brand. Um, that's the spices that didn't absorb into the meat while well, I was shaking spices out. So we'll just throw that right on top of there. Anyway, we'll go. 
center that up over here. Put this up where it somewhat belongs. See if we can wipe some extra spices off the stove here. I'm trying to do a better job of keeping my kitchen clean. And I think I'm done day three here now of this part of that aspect of this project. And I'm doing better, which is good. So at the end of the day, I had some unexpected company, and I was in the middle of the process. And it was actually kind of embarrassing a little bit. So away we go. Now, at the end of here, I will clean that glass top stove. Um, this is my last of a bottle of Wyman's which paste, which works pretty good, but I usually use, oh, what's the name brand of this other stuff? Let's see if I can find it real quick here. Uh, Ceramabrite. There we go. I think they're basically the same thing. And then Ceramobrite also sells these, they're basically uh, scotch Bright pads, the yellow ones. And of course they're, they're branded as good. And that works real good. You use it kind of like you would a, a um, rubbing compound on your car. And that keeps the glass shiny, keeps it smooth. And does not uh, I have not had it damaged the top at all you saw the well maybe you didn't see me the other day I think I lost that clip I I cleaned the stove top the other day and actually used it was a bad enough shape I actually used the razor blade on it and I don't do that very often but I had to this last time okay that's beginning to look better. Same thing with the steak as with the meat, the uh, minute steaks the other day. You want to let it sit there and sear on that side, but you also want to have the, the uh, juices in the meat begin to, to bleed all the way out the top. And you're beginning to see that here in a couple spots. There's one little spot there that's beginning to but that's actually on top of that bone so that's not quite the same thing uh, where the meat separated here you're beginning to see it work up and uh, away we go well rather than sitting there it's kind of like watching paint dry we'll uh, bring you back when it's time to flip that puppy okay we are beginning to uh, Get some pretty good color on the top of this. That spot I pointed out earlier is definitely bubbling. I got some other spots here that are beginning to work. So away we go. I am going to turn that because the last night, or last night, like the other night when I was doing the minute steaks, I let it sear too long. That's a much better looking pan sear on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good mix. Uh, just salt, pepper, and garlic. I think I'm gonna like that a lot. pepper on there. I don't think there's any pepper. We can do 57 sauce tonight rather than putting the horseradish alongside of it. Uh, I got some ranch dressing. I'm going to put some ranch dressing alongside of this too. 
once in a while. I don't mind a little bit of ranch dressing on it here. Let's see here. Let's let's let the wrong way. Let's wind that out just a little bit. That Ninja air fryer sure works nicely. Um, I don't mind doing my steaks in that. That's, that's, just, that's pretty simple because you just throw it in and you put it in for half your time. You turn it over and let it run for the rest of your time. And that does pretty good. What I tend to do with that, and I probably should just wait until I do a air fryer video, but what I also tend to do on that is use, use the air fryer for my already frozen meat. Now this steak that I'm doing here has never been frozen. Um, it's completely fresh. Uh, but the air fryer, what I what I tend to do is uh, set my temperatures, run through its preheat mo mode, and while it's preheating, I go ahead and put the piece of meat in there and let it warm up kind of saw in that process so i'm gonna have like i said i'm gonna put out i'm gonna have a little bit of uh, ranch dressing a little bit of heinz 57 and let's look at that steak a little bit yeah that's because it gets a pretty nice color all the way around it here yep We'll bring it back here in a little bit. It's gonna it's gonna be probably another four minutes on this. Okay, we're a ways into this now. Um, it's probably about two and a half minutes since the last clip. If you notice, beginning to get meat juice running up here. This is why you don't want to flip it, and it's also then why at the end you want to let the steak rest because. The meat will reabsorb that as it's resting for a little bit. But if you flip it, you just you you lose a lot of the flavor for your steak. That's actually good flavoring. And at this point, with it having raised, if that you know that that's just beef stock is all that is, and it's cooked good enough that that. Uh, it's not going to hurt you to eat it, even if it's pork juice. Of course, this obviously is beef, but uh, even pork juice that way won't, won't hurt you. Not necessary to burn your, your meat to a crisp. Okay, all in all, here we've got about an 11 minute uh, fry on this. This will probably be a little redder than what I normally eat it. But on the other hand, it sure smells good. And I'm beginning to have all the signs that I really like to see. And you see I'm losing some of that juice as it goes. And now this is what I really wanted to see. The other night, oh, I should have turned that off. The other night, my pan really got sticky here at this point. And by doing what I've done here, I'm not anywhere near as sticky as what it was the other night. Put the fan on here. Probably move this off the burner. And uh, away we go. Looking good. Well, let's get this over to the table. I'm going to let this rest for just a little longer. I usually let my steak rest for three to four minutes after I get done cooking it. It's still cooking inside. And, uh, it'll catch up to us. Now let's see if this works at all here. Looks good to me from this standpoint. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your accomplishments. Thank you for your hand of safety. And the fellows that I helped today alongside the road, you let him know that you're still good and that his life 
was touched by you today. Thank you for letting me be your hand. Pray now you bless this food to my body. Give me a good night's sleep. And may the rest of this week be, be honoring and glorifying to you. Ask it in thy name. Oh, let's see if we can catch this here. <laughs> yeah, my way to town. I went to town this morning to uh, get some some uh, bits for my drill motor, screwdriver bits. I've got all sorts of number two Phillips. I thought I had some number one Phillips, but I couldn't find any. So I went to town, and all I could find in town were six of them. Uh, one Bosch, three DeWalt, and two Milwaukee. And, uh, yeah, on the way to town, we uh, passed a guy that was trying to get a sectional couch home and evidently didn't get the thing tied down because part of the sectional couch was laying in the berm of the road and he was struggling to get it back in. One guy, a pretty good sized chunk of couch and so I stopped and helped him get everything redone there. Well, that's that's the fatty leg. That's not really what we're looking at here, but I like the fatty leg. Mm. See what it looks like here. This way. Yeah, I would say that's medium well. It's not overly done. It's not utterly done. It's still juicy. And I like it a lot. Well... I'm going to enjoy this, and I'll bring you back, and we'll clean that pan out, okay? Well, yep, that steak was pretty good. It's now time to clean up, and I think I'm just going to end this one here. Thanks for watching. That was a T-bone steak, and uh, I liked it. Hope you enjoyed coming along. Take care. Sorry about eating in front of you, but I didn't eat in front of you. I just cut the piece of meat, showed you the end result. You take care. Bye-bye.